Hey savvy people, let's explore some more development here from System76. I'm on the GitHub page. Recently we checked out how they're working on a new Rust developed desktop environment called Cosmic Desktop, which will optimize the desktop environment on Pop! OS. And now they're introducing the System76 scheduler. They've been clearly working on this for a few months at this point, but let's check out what this actually is. If you're interested in more information about that, Rust developed desktop, I'll post a link in the description below where you can check out a review that I made about the latest development and what it's going to potentially look like. But before we get too far into it, we need to describe what a scheduler is. So what is a scheduler and why is it so exciting to hear new development on it? So a scheduler, if we think about a CPU that handles execution of processes, so processes are sent down to the CPU and it executes some sort of instructions for these processes that we're talking about. Then it returns some kind of a result to the process and it just kind of keeps iterating over and over, executing instructions for a process and giving results back based on whatever process is happening. So that's our CPU. Well, this is all fine, but there has to be something that prioritizes these processes that get sent down to the CPU. So let's uh, think about this in a different fashion. If we have the CPU, we'll just draw a new one here. And we think about all the various things that need to be executed by your CPU. So let's just take one thing for an example, like a game. What does the game need? Well, you have to store memory for a game. You also have to render graphics, so rendering various forms of computing, such as math, and of course, dot, 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 much more here for a game to properly run. Because the game isn't the only thing running on an operating system, you have many more things getting rendered, like your desktop environment, other processes in the background, compilation, all sorts of things happens at the CPU level. So the idea of a scheduler is to prioritize what gets access to a CPU first. So let's think of it like this. Let's draw some extra blocks out real quick. And we'll focus on what's in these blocks here because we can imagine this as a queue of items and we can order these items. So I'm just gonna call this one, two, three, four, five, six things in the queue. So as we said, the job of the scheduler is to prioritize what gets access to the CPU. And then it also fills the CPU with execution for non-critical tasks whenever it's just sitting idle. So things that aren't of high priority, it doesn't have to necessarily take care of right away. So it doesn't have to be up here in the beginning of the queue. Instead, it can be towards the end. And then whenever it's not working on some of the critical things, it can handle execution for a process. So again, let's think about this as a queue of processes that all need to be handled. So we can say the game needs some information from your computer, so it has to access memory and it does it through the CPU. So that might be your highest priority at that point in time. Next, you want to make sure to keep re-rendering your graphics. So that just might come in, I don't know, let's just say it comes in both slots two, four, and six. And maybe you're trying to go to a target location. So some math is going to be involved by the CPU as well. So we got memory access, rendering, math, rendering, math, rendering, so on and so forth. You can have a ton of processes here. Well, this is only focused on the game at the moment. So you're going to also have other processes trying to fight for using the CPU, such as the operating system still needs to run in the background system. So things like the desktop have to be rendered, sound has to play, windows have to refresh, all sorts of fun stuff. And the job of the scheduler is to schedule these things all out into this queue for your whole operating system to re remain operational. And it just handles what is going to be rearranged or arranged in this queue so everything runs efficiently. So you can see how powerful a scheduler is and why this is so exciting to hear development by System76 because they're taking an all around approach to their operating system, Pop! OS, to make things more efficient. And this is another exciting Rust development. Typically a scheduler would be built in C but in true System76 fashion, they've went to Rust. So let's check out the scheduler project and see what System76 has to say about it now that we understand a little bit about schedulers and how they work. So the first thing I'll mention is, looks like we've had quite a bit of development over the last few months. This System76 scheduler is based 94% on Rust. A makefile just helps build the project, so it's not really 
a part of the programming. It just helps manage and compile files with tool chains. Rust here is the predominant language for the project. And looking over here, we see the scheduler is a scheduling service which optimizes Linux CPU scheduler and automatically assigns process priorities for improved desktop responsiveness. This is a win for everybody as you would expect. The more improved desktop responsiveness, the more we'll feel like we're in control of our desktops and that we can use it quickly. What's really exciting about this is they tout here that it will automatically work and adjust itself based on if you're AC powered, meaning you have a full-fledged desktop, or you're battery powered and you have a laptop. So it does reassign priorities depending on what kind of power your system currently has access to. Great way to look at it. And then it says when combined with pop shell, foreground processes and their sub processes will be given a higher priority. So they've put their foot down and assigned higher process priority to things that are very important to the desktop, such as their shell environment. Moving on, they say that these changes will result in a noticeable improvement in the experience smoothness and performance of applications and games. That's quite exciting because we all love playing games as well as running applications. So anything that can help improve the responsiveness is a huge win. It's quite exciting. We'll see how well Rust works all of this out as well as how well developed the scheduler is by System76. They claim a improved responsiveness of applications is most noticeable on older systems with budget hardware, which is fantastic. Who doesn't want to reuse some of the older hardware they have sitting around and get a boost of responsiveness out of it? And games are going to benefit as well from higher frame rates and reduced jitter which is also fantastic. Why is this? It's because background applications and services will now be giving a smaller portion of the leftover CPU budget. We talked about when the CPU is idle or it's not working on some time critical execution tasks. Well, it sounds like this scheduler is going to reprioritize how exactly then the CPU takes advantage of that idle time. And it sounds like they're able to optimize in which way it gets to schedule things. Also mentioned is that there's going to be a process priority configuration file, a RON configuration file, which is located here in Etsy system 76 scheduler assignments in a second place for user defined instead of just system defined and says that you can actually assign priorities to specific processes on the computer. So we can see here a high priority is denoted by a negative five, which is in this sort of an array of strings that say the GNOME shell process, the KWIN process and XORG process are very high priority for the scheduler versus absolute lowest priority. So things like tool chains here in the bottom that they've decided to put in mainly C++, GCC for C compilation, LLD linking, make files or building things with Rust, the Rust compiler, those are considered at least here by default, absolute lowest priority. So they're saying 19 here and giving us an array of various different processes that are considered the lowest priority. What's fantastic about this is you don't have to go with the default here. You can switch this around and it's very easy to edit because all you have to do is introduce a comma and a new string of whatever process that you want, or you can move things around. Let's, let's say you want the compilation of tool chains to take a higher priority, then you can move it up right to the high priority tasks. Or if you need it somewhere in between, there are different values of priorities. So it says here that the lowest value you can enter is negative 10. If, if you do anything under the negative 10, it will be capped out to negative 10. So if instead I could change this to let's say negative 11, it'll only process it as a negative 10 priority. And what that means is the lower the value, the greater that priority is. So here it says that, so make sure you don't get confused here. The bigger the number doesn't mean it's gonna happen first. Instead, it's quite the opposite. We can also see some of the CPU scheduler lat latency configurations. So this is for the Linux kernel. We won't get too much into this. What I'm more excited about is to see what type of performance gains we get out of using the System76 scheduler, perhaps on Pop! OS, and whether it will be available on other Linux distributions or operating systems. It's all quite exciting. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you excited as well? There's been quite some development with System76. It's exciting to see everything that they're working on, especially how much they're trying to push for the Rust language to become popular in the operating system space. 
where every moment counts and things need to be very predictable. They're proving that Rust is a capable language and can compete against C in this space. Well, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.